Liernia of the Lakes has it all. Fine dining, interesting people, and relaxing locales that you'll want to take the whole family to. There's a lot to see and do in Liernia, so I'm going to be your personal tour guide in this sunny, funny region. I'm Jamie Latour, and this is the first part of our walkthrough of Liernia of the Lakes. Now obviously, as you can tell by the map, Liernia is freaking massive. So I'm going to treat it the same way I did with my Stormvell videos and split it up into pieces to make this region easier to navigate. So let's start with the first things you should do once you make it here. From the Lake Facing Cliffs site of Grace, you'll spot this dilapidated church over here. Head inside and you'll notice two things. A sacred tear and this sad sack right here. This is Sorcerer Thops, and he is having a rough go of it. He's a former student of the Academy of Rhea Lucaria who got kicked out for not being particularly good at being a magic boy. He'll ask you for a handful of runes, and I mean a literal handful, because he just wants ten of them. Like Thops, my dude, that's not even gonna get you halfway to level one. You know what? Here, take them. Get yourself a coffee and a sandwich. I'm worried about you. You can then see some spells that he can teach you, and with this selection, it becomes quickly clear why he got kicked out of Elden Ring Hogwarts. He'll also mention that to get inside of Rhea Lucaria, you're going to need a glintstone key, and he'll ask you to give him one if you happen to come across a spare. After that, let's get the hell away from here because Thops is making me feel depressed. From the church, head down this way, and you'll arrive at this graveyard swarming with Grim Reaper skeleton enemies. Here you'll find an academy scroll that you could give to an NPC like Sorceress Selen to learn some new spells. Then go down this path to reach a small enemy camp and there you will find the Glintstone Craftsman's Cookbook 1 on a corpse. Past that, you'll find the Liernia Lakeshore site of grace and this happy little lakeside merchant who must have the soggiest butt from sitting there all day. Now to help with our exploration of Liernia, I'm going to show you where to find all of its map fragments right now. The first one is just up the way from this site of Grace. You'll likely get accosted by these creepy crawlers around here, so deal with them, and you'll find the first map fragment for Liernia East. Then right up the way from this map fragment, and you'll find these ruins called the Laskyar Ruins. I'm probably mispronouncing that. We'll deal with this area another time. For now, let's just keep going forward, head north, keep on riding past this sneaky lobster, and you'll reach this sunken town where you can pick up the Liernia North map fragment and touch the Academy Gate Town site of Grace. Alright, well, the last map fragment is all the way up here, so it's a bit annoying to grab, but grab it we shall anyway. So let's just watch me and Torrent ride all this way across the lake, and we're just gonna keep on riding and riding, and they see me riding, they hating. Seriously, this is a trip, man, just to grab a piece of a map. Along the way, you can touch the Sorcerer's Isle site of Grace located here, and then just keep on going here onto land, and this is your map fragment for Liernia West, along with the Northern Liernia Lakeshore site of Grace located here. So, since we went all that way to get the Liernia West map fragment, we might as well start there. The rest of this video is going to detail all of the important locations, bosses, and other neat crap that this section of the region contains. Let's go all the way back to the Liernia Lakeshore site of Grace, and there's a spirit spring not too far from our damp merchant friend. Hop on that, and you'll be at the Malefactor's Ever Jail over here, where you can fight this big chonky boy named Adan, Thief of Fire. This guy sucks. He's a pushover, and beating him will net you the Flame of the Fell God incantation, which I guess he stole? After you're done with him, just drop down here. You'll take a bit of fall damage, but you'll be fine. Just keep on riding. Eventually, you'll come to this group of land squids. Just keep going past them, and riding, and more riding, and eventually, we will come to this cave here, known as the Lakeside Crystal Cave. In this cave, you'll find the Spear Talisman and the Cerulean Amber Medallion Talisman after defeating a Bloodhound Knight. Then you'll find a sad lady named Latena and her dead wolf just kind of chilling there. And uh, when you speak to her, she'll tell you to kick rocks. Touch the Slumbering Wolf Shack Site of Grace, and we'll come back to this spot in a little bit. Ride on from the cave, and you'll find a Fort 
full of fire monks. This is actually where I got this luxurious orange coat off of a lucky drop on one of these enemies, and I've been rocking that for practically the entire game on my other character. Kill all the monks here, and you'll get a fire monk prayer book and the fire spur me gesture, which makes you do that thing that Matthew McConaughey did in the Wolf of Wall Street trailer. Now let's continue on from the fire monk fort and oh <laughs> goody. A poison swamp. Luckily, Torrent is immune to poison, so you can just ride him through here and not take any damage. You can pick up this Ash of War by killing this Scarab here, and then you can find the Folly on the Lake site of Grace. Head roughly southwest of this Grace site, and you should stumble across the Village of the Albanarix. Or Albanarix? Al Al Albanorix? Why are so many words in this game so hard for my brain to comprehend? This is a little hidden zone filled with guys who seem to be permanently stuck in the downward dog yoga position. If you arrive here at night, you should find the Feli Lu under this bridge, provided that you've been advancing her quest line. Talk to her, and she'll seem really sad about this sad little village. Yeah, it is pretty sad here. Now go ahead and kill every single person in this village. Around this area, you'll find a larval tier within the village, and then from this side of Grace, head up the hill, you'll fight this interesting character, and then at the top of the hill, you'll find a suspicious glowing jar. Roll into it to reveal Albus, an Albaneric who seems to still be sane enough to talk, and also spends copious amounts of time coughing in your face. <laughs> Thank God I'm wearing a pumpkin mask. He'll give you one half of the secret Halg Tree medallion and tell you that Latena knows where the other half is before coughing himself to death. Now head across this bridge and you'll find the Feli Lu summon sign on the other side. I think there may be a boss ahead. Sure enough, you'll run into the Omen Killer. Kill him to get the Crucible Knot Talisman. After that's all finished, warp back to the slumbering wolf shack site of Grace from earlier, speak to Latena now, and she'll be a lot more friendly since you have one half of the medallion. She'll then give you a bit of a hint about where the other half is and offer to come with you. You'll then gain her ashes so you can summon her. Which, I guess, means that she died. Huh. Also, she's an Albaneric, this is an Albaneric, and apparently these tadpole guys are also Albanerics. I have no damn clue what an Albaneric is supposed to be. Anywho, we're done with the sad village for now, so warp to the Folly on the Lake site of Grace and head roughly west. You'll eventually see a minor Erd tree in the distance, as well as this site of Grace for the converted tower. Now this tower has no ladder up, so you need to get on the wall behind it and jump onto the side of the tower to get inside. Do that, and you'll get yourself a memory stone. Then head up the hill to the Erd tree to fight an Erd tree avatar. This boss is very weak to fire, so if you got any good fire fire incantations, or fire arrows, or fire pots that you can throw at it, you should do some really good damage with that. Beat this guy, and you'll score the Ruptured Crystal Tear and the Cerulean Crystal Tear that you can mix into a concoction with your Flask of Wondrous Physic. Okay, we're still going north. Just keep on going north, and you should eventually find this statue that just has horrific posture. It'll point you down this way, where you can kill a Scarab for the Sword Dance Ash of War, and then you'll find find the roads and catacombs. In here, you'll fight one of my favorite bosses ever, an invisible snail. Why wasn't this the main boss from software? Once you're done with the catacombs, ride north and north and north and why am I being kicked off of my horse? There's a shack here with a sight of grace, and oh look, it's Edgar the Revengar. If you don't remember Edgar, you meet him at Castle Morn at the southern end of the Weeping Peninsula, and you give him a letter from his daughter Irina, who is later violently murdered because Edgar is a crappy dad. He swears revenge on whoever committed that act, and he must be a terrible detective as well because he apparently thinks everyone who comes by his shack killed his daughter. This guy sucks. Kill him, and you'll get a Shabriri grape, as well as some raw meat dumplings. There's also a bunch of raw meat dumplings on these corpses inside of his shack. Was 
he making dumplings out of the people that he killed? He was making dumplings out of the people that he killed, wasn't he? North of this crap shack is the Cuckoo's Ever Jail. And inside of that, in O Balls, it's Bowls. They knew what they were doing when they gave him this name. You don't name somebody that and not know what you're doing. Beat him to get the Great Phalanx Sorcery, and then head up past a creepy Latin singing bat to get this Sight of Grace. Now you may notice that this Grace is called the Foot of the Four Belfries. But where? are the four belfries. Well, head through this foresty area past these ghost trolls to find the four belfries. Touch the side of grace here, and then open up this chest to get an imbued sword key. Yes, that's another kind of collectible we now have to watch out for. The other three belfries here will have inactive portals that one of these keys will activate. These all go to cool, secret areas that I won't spoil here, except for one, because it takes you all the way back to the Chapel of Anticipation from the very beginning of the game so you could teach that grafted scion a lesson or two. North from the foot of the four belfries site of grace will be these pissed off jellyfish and in the middle of them will be the jellyfish shield. Then there's a fort with an annoying noble who keeps shooting magic at you from the top. I hate this guy. There's not really anything amazing here just a couple of items so head on from here and you'll find a whole lot of fellas surrounding these trolls pulling a caravan. In the chest at the back of that caravan will be the carrion knight's sword. Since we touched the sorcerer's isles side of grace earlier, I'll cover that area quickly. Go across the lake to that island, and you'll find a tower that will ask you to seek three wise beasts. Then a whole bunch of zombies are gonna pop out of the ground and it becomes the Night of the Living Dead over here. What you need to do is to find three invisible turtles, which could be found here, and then there's one up a tree here, and then there's a sneaky turtle boy hiding down here. After you've murdered them all, the seal on the tower will disappear and you can head inside for yet another memory stone. Okay, we've now wrapped around to where we got the West Lyernia map fragment all that time ago and my god has this video been a beast to edit. North of that is the King's Realm Ruins which is full of wolves and invisible magic boys. There's also a secret little boss fight stashed away here and you have to kind of roll around or smack the ground to uncover the secret stairs to it. Once you're in there, you'll fight the Royal Revenant, who is a royal pain in the ass. Defeat this douche, and you'll get the Frozen Needle Weapon. These ruins also have a secret entrance that I stumbled across by smacking this wall, and on the other side is the Site of Grace and this tall gentleman. This is E.G. the Blacksmith, who will upgrade your weapons, sell you somber smithing stones, and has the best pronunciation of cuckoo I have ever heard. When the Rey and Lucan the Academy turned on the Karians. The Knights of the Cuckoo descended on this tract, unless you wish to lie with the corpses of the heedless Knights of the Cuckoo. I could listen to this guy say cuckoo all day. It gives me life. He'll tell you to stay away from Carrion Manor, which is just up the path ahead. Well, nuts to that. No one is going to tell me what to do. Oh dear God, this is a nightmare. Magic arrows will rain from the sky, but if you ride Torrent well enough, you should arrive at this site of grace just outside of Carrion Manor. And that's where we're going to finish this video for today. And that's everything of note that I could think of along West Lyernia. I may have missed a thing or two, so if I did, feel free to let me know in the comments below. We're going to continue to explore the rest of Lyernia in some more videos, including this middle area that I don't really know what to call. Like, is this Lake Lyernia, or is it just like the water zone? Is it lobster hell? I don't know, I'll figure it out. For now, head on over to thegamer.com for more Elden Ring news and guides, and I'll see you here soon for more waterlogged Lyernia fun.